In the name of Jesus, amen. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, in 1970, a five-man electrical band by the name of, well, the, the five-man electrical band released a song called Signs. You might remember this song. It was a typical hippie anthem against authority, rules, and expectations. It spoke of the anger that we have towards the signs that tell us, do this, don't do that. Can't you read the signs? The fault, though, is not in our signs. It is in our reaction to those signs. After all, signs are all around us. Or as the five men electrical band said, signs, signs, everywhere the signs. Signs can give us great fear and terror. They come as warnings to us or cautionary signs. But signs can also give us great comfort and peace. In our reading tonight regarding Gideon, we see that there are many signs at play here. The terebinth, this great oak tree at Ophrah, is the setting of our story. And the fact that this takes place under a tree in a wine press gives us a sign that Gideon was terribly afraid. You see, he was there threshing wheat. And this was normally done by beating it out in an open field while the wheat would fall into a blanket or a basket, some kind of container. And then the chaff would blow away with the wind. But Gideon is not in an open field. He is here in a wine press. A wine press where wind of any sort would be very undesirable and therefore very scarce. He is here in a wine press underneath this great terebinth. And this is because Gideon is fearful of being seen by the Midianites. This tree at Ophrah is a sign of Gideon's fear and weakness. It is under this tree, then, that the angel of the Lord appears to Gideon. He calls Gideon a mighty man of valor, although he looks like anything but. And he assures him that the Lord is with him. But Gideon is not sure. He is certainly not sure of his might or, or of his valor. And he is not confident that the one standing with him, that the one standing with him is indeed the Lord. You see, Gideon believes the Lord has forsaken them. He has given his people over to the hands of the Midianites. And so, Gideon puts the Lord to the test, bringing him a goat and some unleavened cakes. And by the angel of the Lord's command, he puts them on a rock. He pours broth over them, saturating them in a similar way that Elijah saturated and drenches his offering on the altar with, with water. The broth would make the meat and the bread soggy, not easily consumed by the fire. And the Lord gives Gideon a sign. He touches the food with the tip of his staff and ignites a consuming fire from the rock. Well, this terrifies an already afraid Gideon. For now he knows that the one speaking to him is indeed the Lord himself. And he is afraid because he has seen the Lord now face to face. No one shall see God's face and live, Gideon knows. Certainly he'll face destruction and wrath. Indeed, God has forsaken Gideon and his people. But the Lord has given him a sign. But this sign strikes terror into the heart of Gideon. It strikes him with fear. So the Lord comes to him again. And instead of a sign, God gives him his word. Peace to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. In confidence in that comfort and assurance, Gideon goes on to tear down the idols of his father, to destroy the altar of Baal, and to pull down the Asherah pole. With this altar, God commands him to build a new altar, one that is properly laid in order, properly built for the one true God. And with the wood from this Asherah pole, 
he will light a fire and offer a burnt offering to his God, the only true God. The altar and the wood that were designated for false worship of false gods has now been recycled or, or repurposed as a means of sacrifice to the one true God. Lent, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, is a season of signs. Remember the ashes that you had on your forehead a couple weeks ago on Ash Wednesday. The sign of our mortality and our death. Remember the sign of the disciple Judas dipping his bread with Jesus who goes on to betray his Lord. Remember the sign of the rooster crowing after Peter denies Jesus three times. And these signs strike terror and fear to us. The ashes are a sign of our mortality, a sign that death comes to us all. Judas and Peter are, are signs that even the most faithful followers of Jesus can betray him and deny him. And this also causes us to fear. What about me? What would I do if, if my faith were put to the test in such a way? Is it possible that I could fall away too? Are we, in terms of our discipleship, mighty men of valor? Or are we like Gideon, weak men among a weak people? The Lord goes on to give Gideon more signs. Signs of a fleece that does not get wet in the dew. And then following that sign, where only the fleece is wet and the ground around it is dry. And these signs come to Gideon with comfort and assurance. The Lord will be with you. When you battle the Midianites, when you battle oppression, when you battle these vandals and robbers, the Lord has your back. And so, what are our signs that give us a similar comfort and assurance? A sign that, that, that Jesus has our back. Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you, we say with the scribes and the Pharisees. And Jesus gives us this, this great sign for our comfort and peace, for the consolation of our consciences. He says, no sign will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. This is the great sign of Lent, the only sign that is needed. It is the sign of the cross of Jesus and his death on Good Friday, his glorious resurrection on Easter Sunday. You see, as Jonah was swallowed by that great fish in the belly of the beast, which would, sure, would have meant sure and certain death for anyone, he emerged three days later, alive and well. So also then, Jesus goes to the tomb, a place of sure and certain death. And indeed, Jesus did die. But on the third day, he emerged victorious, alive and well, resurrected and whole. And so we look at this sign, this, this great miracle of life that Christ has accomplished, and it sustains us in our weaknesses. When we, like Gideon, are afraid and terrified of our enemies in this world, which, which are sin, death, and the devil, we take refuge in the cross of Christ. Christ has defeated these enemies once and for all. And the cross is the sign given to us that God loves us and that he has provided for us. The empty tomb is a sign of Jesus' victory, that he has conquered sin, death, and the devil for you. You need not be afraid, but you may have full confidence and consolation that Christ's sacrifice was acceptable to God. Just as Gideon's sacrifice was consumed by the angel of the Lord, as holy and pleasing to him, so also Christ's sacrifice is holy and pleasing to God. Just as we see Gideon use the stones and the wood of false idols to false gods, so also this cross of wood used to execute the worst Roman criminals in the Roman Empire 
would now become an instrument of salvation, a sign of God's love for you. The five-man electrical band's song ends with this verse. The sign said, everyone welcome, come on in, kneel down and pray. But when they passed around the play to the end of it all, I didn't have a penny to pay. So I got me a pen and a paper, and I made up my own little sign. I said, thank you, Lord, for thinking about me. I'm alive and doing fine. The signs of the cross and of the empty tomb what Jesus calls the sign of the prophet Jonah, these signs do in fact tell us that all are welcome and that the Lord indeed is thinking of us. Jesus was thinking of us when he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus was thinking of us when he said, Father, forgive them. Jesus was thinking of us when he said, It is finished. And so, in worship and praise, we thank God for those signs. We thank the Lord for thinking of us and rejoice that because of him, we have life. We are alive and doing fine. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.